The next reason for low or suboptimal levels of testosterone and hormones in men and women is a very interesting topic that I'd like to dive into next, which is really perhaps this two-pronged attack of high fiber, low fat diets, which do appear to negatively affect testosterone in a significant way. So this is a paper titled The Effects of Dietary Fat and Fiber on Plasma and Urine Androgens and Estrogens in Men, a Controlled Feeding Study. This is not an epidemiology study. This is a controlled feeding study done with 43 healthy men aged 19 to 56. They were either randomized to a low-fat, high-fiber or high-fat, low-fiber diet for 10 weeks after a two-week washout period they were crossed over to the other diet. So this is a crossover study. They say the energy content of the diets was varied to maintain constant body weight, but averaged 3,170 calories per day on both diets. The low fat diet provided 18.8% .8 of energy from fat with a, this is important, a ratio of polyunsaturated to saturated fat of 1.3. So more polyunsaturated than saturated fat on the low fat, high fiber diet, that's important, Whereas the high fat diet provided 41% of energy from fat with a polyunsaturated to saturated ratio of 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So two things happened in each of these arms. Perhaps it would have been better if the researchers changed one thing at a time, but in the low fat group, they had lower fat, less than half of the amount of fat. And the fat they did get was majority. And the fat they did get was majority. And of the fat they got, the majority was composed of polyunsaturated fat, and they got less saturated fat. The high fat diet had 41% of energy from fat, and they had less polyunsaturated fat and more saturated fat. In the high fiber group that was low fat, they ate about a little more than twice the amount of fiber that the higher fat, low fiber group ate per day. And that amount was um, pretty significant. It was around I would say it looks like from the paper between 50 to 60 grams of fiber in the high fiber group and 20 to 30 grams of fiber in the low fiber group. So pretty significant differences in the amount of fiber. They measured plasma concentrations of total and sex hormone binding globulin bound testosterone. And they found that the um, concentrations were significantly higher, 13 and 15% higher respectively on the high fat, low fiber diet which you can see here. And the difference from the low fat, high fiber diet was significant for the SHBG bound fraction of testosterone. That is the sex hormone binding globulin bound fraction for the testosterone. I should have mentioned this perhaps a little earlier in the podcast that when we are talking about free or bioavailable testosterone, those are similar, but not the exact same measurement. Testosterone can be bound to albumin. It can be bound to sex hormone binding globulin. And if your SHBG goes up, then your free testosterone is going to go down. So they were measuring both the bound portion and the free portion of testosterone in this study with these two interventions. So from this study, which was a crossover study, 10 weeks, 43 healthy men of ages 19 to 56, they found that a low fiber, higher fat, higher saturated fat, lower polyunsaturated fat resulted in better hormonal profiles, better testosterone profiles, and actually apparently more favorable estrogenic profiles in men. So one of the reasons that your testosterone could be low is you're not getting enough saturated fat, you're getting too much polyunsaturated fat, or you're eating too much fiber. We know that lots of insoluble fiber, lots of plant fiber in general can bind to hormones in the gut and interrupt enterohepatic circulation. It's debated whether this is a good thing or a bad thing that hormones are recycled in your gut. Some people say it's a good thing. Some people say it's a bad thing. But if the fiber is binding to hormones in your gut and pulling them out, it is going to decrease their absorption. It is going to decrease their recirculation and decrease your overall levels. There are studies in women that I can talk about on the podcast that will accompany this one, perhaps in the future on women's hormones that show that women who eat more fiber have a higher rate of anovulation and a higher rate of infertility possibly because the excess plant fiber in the gut is interrupting normal enterohepatic circulation of estrogens, which is necessary for proper cycling in many women. So excess fiber can be problematic for humans, something that is controversial in my views, but I have talked about many times in the past. So let's talk about another meta-analysis, which shows very similar findings 
So I've had Joel Whitaker, the author of this meta-analysis on the podcast in the past. The title is Low-Fat Diets and Testosterone in Men, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Intervention Studies. You can see here that there were significant decreases in sex hormones on low-fat versus high-fat diets. They went on to say that low-fat diets appear to decrease testosterone levels in men but further randomized control trials are needed to confirm this effect. I know that Joe was thinking about being involved in some of those, and hopefully we will see the results of them soon. But these, this is not a small meta-analysis. They said that they included um, six eligible studies, a total of 206 participants. So it's reasonable. It's hard to find these studies. Many of them, like the one we just saw, are not a ton of men. There were 43 in the previous study. This is a six study meta-analysis of 206 participants. So, but it's a pretty clear signal here. You can see the p-values and confidence intervals if you want to read the abstract of this paper by Joe Whitaker. But I think that this is a fascinating question. It flies in the face of modern, quote unquote, colloquial wisdom, which is to limit saturated fat for cardiovascular disease reasons, probably because saturated fat will raise LDL in some individuals. But if you've listened to my other podcast, you know that I do not fear LDL that is higher in individuals who are metabolically healthy because they are including nutrient-rich animal fats and organs and meat in their diets. So I don't worry about saturated fat in humans, even humans with ApoE4, and I've talked about that in previous podcasts as well. And these studies, this meta-analysis, this controlled feeding study might also suggest that saturated fat from animal fats is essential or very helpful for increasing testosterone with all of its tendon benefits in men and helping hormones in women as well. We cannot ignore this. And all of this makes great sense evolutionarily. What are the foods of fertility? What are the foods of libido? Why is meat carnal? Why are things called carnitine, carnosine? Because these are the foods that increase libido. We know this intuitively. Humans have known this forever. You get a big kill, you eat the organs, you share it with your wife, and then you have romantic experiences. You have intimacy, you have sex because you are horny, because you have nutrients in your body. This is what humans need. Humans don't feel necessarily horny after eating salads. And remember, I talked about this a lot recently, Kellogg's was created by Harvey Kellogg to prevent masturbation. Kellogg's cereal, cornflakes are the anti-masturbatory food. They are going to tank your hormones. This is the connection with Seventh-day Adventist movement and a lot of these grain-based foods. If you eat a bunch of grains and you don't eat animal fats, you will control your hormones. You won't have a libido which could be good if the libido is very problematic in your life. But in general, most of us want a healthy libido. So how do we get that? We get that with animal foods, animal organs, and animal fat. 